Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to share my screen here. And uh, thanks, Bethany, for setting this up. Love to show you guys what we have to offer here at A to Z Databases. As she mentioned, my name is Jordan Laborg. I'm the general manager of A to Z. Um, this product is available through the library's collection online resources. You would be able to access it for free with a library card. So I'll be walking you through the database today, giving you some good examples on how this gets utilized from a research standpoint, uh, finding information on all businesses, people, and jobs in the U.S. Um, if you come up with any questions, please feel free to write them down. We'll have a, a short Q&A at the end of the, the demonstration to make sure we answer all of those questions. Right now, you're looking at the landing page or the home page of the database. Now, with this product, what we wanted to do is we wanted to provide as much information as possible to find all those businesses, all those jobs, and all those people. We also wanted to make sure it was very user-friendly and easy to pick up and use. Now, at the top of your screen, you can search for a particular business if you're searching by name. You can search for a job or you can search for a person. So if you do know what you're looking for, simply just type it in here from the home screen and click search. So I'm going to look for a company called Cisco. Maybe I don't know where that company is located. If I'm looking for the headquarter, I can find that specifically. And I can click search. Now, that headquarter location of Cisco floats at the top of the screen for us because we're sort, going to sort first based on those revenues of the company. Now, if you wanted to sort and see Cisco by business name, sort it alphabetically. If you want to sort it by the city and state, you can click on any of these categories or select our sort category. Clicking on the company name will open up that detailed business profile. This is where you're going to start to find more information on the company. You do have quick links on the left to jump to each section of the database. But your overview information will focus on where this company is located, contact information including phone numbers, websites, key contacts, or executives. Our demographics focuses more on the number of employees, whether that's at the location or the corporate level, what type of revenues the company is dealing in, is it public or private? Public companies will have stock information and Google Finance links. So click on those to get more stock information. Credit rating graphs for each company. We do have job postings through Indeed.com. So everything is kind of added in real time with our relationship with Indeed. You can see this one was just added about 17 hours ago. Here you can view all the company's jobs. Your industry profile goes over SIC and NAICS codes. Now, what this means, these are classifications to help group businesses into a particular industry if you're not familiar. So you get a better understanding here of what lines of business Cisco is really associated with. So we know it's a grocery-related product wholesaler, a distribution center. You know, they're dealing in meat, fish, dairy, lots of different types of products. You'll find these blue information icons throughout the database. If there's any piece of information that you're not familiar with, you'll be able to get some additional clarification here. We have a description of the organization or the company. QR codes, if you're familiar, you can actually scan that with your smartphone. It's going to take some of that contact and overview information and import it right into your device. It's kind of a quick way to get some of that information onto your phone. We've got some other important information here, including a news feed. This links up to Bing search engine. It's going to find the most recent articles related to the company. Click on those headlines. takes us directly to those articles. We also have some competitors in the area. You can link to those businesses nearby that are also a competitor. You can find revenue information, employee information. You can hover over those graphs to get those values. You also see some trends as well from year over year. Nearby businesses is just the closest businesses to this location. Expenditures based on categories, executive directory, any internet presence links. So we do have executive email addresses. So if you're looking to do any type of email marketing, share your experience with a higher level executive, you will have some of those key contacts. Now, one um, 
piece of information here to note about the emails is that this piece of data can't be downloaded, printed, or emailed. And that's due to some CAN spam limitations, helping to reduce the amount of spam and complying with all those laws. So you would be able to copy and paste those to capture those for free, but you won't be able to download, print, or email. So if you do try downloading and you're missing those emails, that's kind of what's going on. Now, all the rest of the information, though, that we saw here on this profile can easily be exported by any of these options. So that's just if you know exactly what you're looking for for a business. You can just type in that company name, city and state, click search and find those businesses. Now on the job side, I won't touch on this too long because I believe we're kind of trying to focus on more of a little bit of a small business perspective and growing your sales, hopefully growing your business in the area. Um, but this allows you to link in with Indeed and find open job positions you can research it by a company, your own keyword, titles, or you can search any of our popular categories. The nice thing about it is it will link up and match you to the business record. That way you can research the company while you also are researching the job. We also have some career resources as well, whether you're trying to work on preparing for your interview, uh, how to apply for your resume. We have resumes, cover letters, templates, and examples. These download into any word processor, completely free for anyone to download. You can take a look at the template, make sure it's the, the format or the example that you're looking for. And then those will export into any word processor. Finally, some interview tips, how to interview, how not to interview videos, and also a follow-up thank you letter template example. Now the last person search, the last search is if you're looking for a person. So you can think of this like a, an online, you know, white pages type directory. Let's say I was looking for, you know, myself. And you know, I'm looking for myself in Nebraska. So we can search through both executives and residents at the same time. So I run this search for both we see that I'm listed under the organization A to Z databases as an executive. So you'll find my name and you'll match me up to a business as well. And you'll also find my residential record. This is the type of information that you'll find available on an individual. Names, addresses, phone numbers where available, county, gender, age information, household incomes, home market values, any census data, as well as any nearby neighbors. Now, this is what's really valuable. I'll show you some examples here in a minute on how we can utilize some of this demographic information, especially if you're trying to grow your business. You can target certain income levels, certain age ranges, um, certain areas of geography to hopefully find and target some of those consumers. You can also do a reverse phone lookup, see if it matches up to a person or a business in a database. But scrolling down, we're going to see more advanced databases that we can jump into. So if we click Get Started, that will open up the business database here, 30 million businesses and executives. Now you're going to see some detailed criteria here on your left side of the screen where you can add to your search to find businesses based on you know, a certain geography. Um, we can narrow down the city, the state, the zip code. We can draw a shape on a map and even narrow results in that area. The next thing people usually search by is the industry. So if you're looking to find businesses in a certain industry, a lot of times you have a good idea, maybe those SIC or, or NAICS codes that you're trying to find. You can type those into our tables here. You can find those in any of our tables. Click on those codes to add it to your search. But if you don't know any of those codes, it makes it very easy here. You can just search by keywords. So let's get rid of these codes. And I'm going to look for a keyword. Um, you know, if I'm trying to look for all the restaurants, now you can see I'm going to be very broad, and I can select an entire category here, and I could say all restaurants. Or you can see it's uh, very granular. So as I'm scrolling down, if I wanted to focus on, you know, the 
hot dog restaurants that are also known to be gluten free. Um, if, if such a business exists, we would be able to find that type of really specific information for all these companies. And you'll find that throughout all the various industries, you can really narrow your scope here and find those businesses. As you add them, they'll come down into your selected keywords box so you know what businesses you're trying to contact. Scrolling down, lots of other selections you can continue to add here. If you're looking for a particular executive name, a title of someone to reach out to, it will just find records that have one of these titles available. You can just add these. If you want to make sure you're reaching out to a CEO, they'll find records that have one of those contacts. Email presence, so if you're looking for those emails specifically, this will allow you to select only records that contain an email. So that narrows your scope and just finds those emails. How big is the organization? By employee sizes, by annual revenues, you can add those different categories and find businesses within a certain size. A lot of other categories, um, women-owned, public-private franchises, um, all the way down to how many computers someone has in their offices. You can get into that much detail. So with this information, our company is Original Data Compiler. So kind of from start to finish, we're updating, verifying, maintaining all this information. Um, what we do is we go through a triple verification process. The first step is actually calling all these businesses. Uh, making about 40,000 phone calls a day from our call center to verify each business every year. We then also check the employer's website to verify that accuracy. And then finally, we do some web mining to pull some information off the Internet and different search engines to make sure that information is also matching what we have in our database. The information is all updated each and every month. Um, let's do an example here. If I wanted to just say I want to see every business in Texas, I can update my account here on the right, get an idea of how your criteria is influencing that search. So you have over a million businesses in Texas. Now, if I wanted to focus on a particular industry, I can open up an industry category here. I can open up to expand these individual windows to find that full classification you might be looking for. Or maybe you just want to be broad and you want to look for just all the manufacturing companies in Texas Update again, we have 41,000 or 288 manufacturers. Now, of course, we can add more criteria to find a more specific search, but once you have all that added, you'll click Search to view your information. Now, this is where we can visualize the data a couple different ways. We can also start downloading, printing, or emailing this data. We allow you to select up to 1,000 records per search. You have the ability to change the records per page from 25 to 100 records. So if we wanted to add up a quick 1,000 records here to export, we would click next to business name to add those 100. We'd go over to the next page, add the next 100 on each business, page, business name. Repeat that process 10 times so we have 1,000 records selected. You could then download, print, or email any of that information. Downloading allows you to put it into an Excel file, comma delimited, or text. You can also choose your level of detail. So if you wanted to customize what information is found in your spreadsheet, you know, this is what you would be able to do here. So it gives you the table. You can search for what type of information you're looking for. So if I want uh, an executive contact, type in exec, I see all those different titles. As you select, it will come over to your selected keywords or selected selection. And from here, you can also change this layout. So if you want to move around these windows, you can make your layout however you like. And then simply just hit Continue to download that information. So I just did a quick download here of those 100 records. We've just got those categories that I selected. It comes right into an Excel file for us. A couple different cool things we can also do. We can map the data. We can graph the data. Mapping will plot all these businesses onto a map for us, and it's going to create a heat signature. So now we can zoom in on Texas, and we can start to see densities, low density to high density, where are all these manufacturers located. You can switch between two different views here at the top. And then, you know, as we zoom in, 
we'll be able to see those individual locations pinpointed onto a map. Now click on those pinpoints to bring back those business names. Anyone who wants to download, print or email any of these images can easily export here above. Now I could also put that into a graphing feature as well. That will put it into a pie chart and a bar graph for you. Right now it's breaking out the revenues of the manufacturers into different categories. Here you can switch between the graphs. And above you can change any of these categories as well. So if I wanted to see what city had the majority of the manufacturers, click on my city category. It will then break it out for you by city, how many or each area. So Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin. So if you scroll down here, we'll list each city. So if I want to focus on the 419 in Plano, click here, go right to those results. But lots of different ways that this can get utilized, whether you're trying to contact other businesses in the area, uh, of course, trying to sell your services, if you're trying to do some competitive research, you can research the competition in the area, see you know, how many employees do they have, how long have they been in business, what are their revenues looking like, um, lots of different ways that you can utilize that information. On the consumer side, to get started here, now this information is also updated monthly. Um, very valuable if you're doing any business to consumer type marketing or if you're trying to find people who might be interested in your product or service or simply if you're an entrepreneur and you're thinking about starting a company, you can utilize some of this information and see if it's a, it's a good opportunity. Similar geography selections here that we can focus on. We can search for names, phone numbers, ages, genders, household income, home market values. And the neat part is the interest, hobby, and lifestyle information. This is all based on buyer behavior information. So, if you have any warranty cards, if you have any magazine subscriptions, um, if you're going to your local grocery store, you're buying a, a big bag of dog food or cat food every so often, um, you know, you might be swiping a, a reward card with that grocer, um, getting you some points per purchase, but a lot of times those companies are selling that information to some other third parties. But it is really valuable because it's usually very expensive to update and also have access to. So this information would be accessible completely free for you to hopefully grow your business. Um, for example, you know, if I'm thinking about opening up a business in town, uh, I'm going to use a, a map-based search. From here, you can put in your own zip code. You can put in a city or a state. Um, let's put in the area here. And you can zoom in. Uh, from here, you can move around your map. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. And from here, we can also draw a shape. We can define a radius or make a drive route between a couple different points. Um, let's say we want to make our own shape. And from here, we can just connect our dots. You know, whatever type of shape you want to make, you can, you can do it. Connect your points. I know I have 12,411 people in that shape. That's where I'm thinking about locating my business. Now, I'm opening up a dog or a cat boarding facility. I want to be able to identify every person who owns a cat or a dog that lives in that shape. If I update my count, I know I have 3,022 people who own cats or dogs in that area. Now, if they're going to board their pets, though, they might also like to travel. We'll say traveling, we'll leave out RV, maybe they'll take their pets with them in that scenario. And we update, we've got 2,500 people in that shape that will be potential customers for our business. So we can view that information, download, get some mailing labels ready, send out some flyers to these individuals. Um, another neat thing we can do is a data matrix. This is just a quick way to tally your results. You could find the average income level of all those people. Run your tally, we know actually 892 would be in the 100 to $150,000 income range. Depending on how big your area is, maybe you want to factor the zip code. Where's the best spot to locate? 78163 is where the majority would be found. 
Now we can kind of use the two databases side by side here if we wanted to. You know, if I was going to open up this business, I can take this zip code. I could go back into the business database, run a search for dog and cat boarding facilities. Do I have any competition in the area? Um, is it a good opportunity for me to open up a business here? Be hopefully having enough consumers or customers to hopefully grow. That information is getting downloaded or getting updated each and every month and the same type of download, print, and email capabilities here. New businesses and new movers, these are getting added weekly. So constantly getting updated here if you want to find any new businesses opening up in an area. Now when we're finding new businesses, let's just say we want to find every business in town. We're going to select our city and then add the town. Okay, and then I want to find all the new businesses based on a time frame. Uh, we can go back the last two years or the last week, or you can pick your own start and end date. Um, you know, let's say we just want all the new businesses um, in the past three months and 39 new businesses. Now, if I open up one of these records, you'll see that it's not going to be as complete as your 30 million businesses and executive database. That's because this data has yet to be verified. So we will verify the information by going through that triple verification process. And once it has been verified, it will then have its own profile in the 30 million businesses and executive product as well. That's kind of how it is here. It's not going to have as complete information until we're able to verify and add those additional sources. New mover information, this is added weekly as well. Um, if you are a small business, if you're trying to get some more members into your organization, <clears throat> this is a great tool for you to use to find people who just moved into town. Um, a good example here is if you know, I owned a, a local gym, um, I'm going to want new memberships from people coming into the town, coming in, getting a membership with my service. I'm going to select our city here. Now we can also focus on the time frame last week to the last year. We can also do a start and end date. Um, let's say we want to know the past six months. And I also want to factor the distance that someone moved because maybe I don't want to market to somebody who moved next door. Um, let's say they had to move 25 miles or more into town. We can segment further by homeowners, renters, housing types, any of these categories. But if I update, I know there's been 378 people who moved 25 miles or more into the city in the past six months. So great contacts, you know, hopefully to, to reach out, expand my business, gain some new, new customers. Inside one of these records, you're actually going to get that previous address and distance information. This individual was just from Sunrise Beach, about 57 miles away. Healthcare professionals, you know, this is something that's for really all patrons. If you want to find the closest specialist in your area, um, use this database. You can put in maybe a radius around your address, find the closest professionals to you. So I'm going to do a search here for a five mile radius of the zip code. Now from here we can add SICs and just simply select the category that we're looking for. Or we can add specialties and you can start typing in like a keyword. So if I was looking for, you know, all those dentists, I can be broad and select dentists or I can get more specific information as well. Let's get rid of our SIC category. And we update our count. We know there are six dentists in a five mile radius of that zip code. Here are your listings. If you click on one of these, this is what you'll find available on a healthcare provider. Name, age if available, gender, license, specialty, any office and address information. And this database is also getting updated quarterly. Now the last database here is universal searching. 
If you sell to business to business, to business to consumer, if you simply just want to know every person, every business in a certain set of geography, it just has you choose your geography and it's going to pull back all that information to you in one search. If you ever have any questions about the data, where it's coming from, who our sources are, how often it's updated, we do have an entire section here dedicated to the data quality. On the right, you will have a more detailed description, accuracy level, and update cycle for each database. Um, we do a lot of great things with training and support as well. So, you know, if you ever want to get more training on the database, we do offer those sessions um, through our A to Z University. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you can sign up for any of these webinars. Mondays is an overview. Wednesdays is job. Fridays is finding customers and growing your business. And these are at 10.30 and 2.30 Central Time. We also have live chat available. So if you're searching the database, you come across some questions, you need some assistance, you would be able to chat with a representative Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 Central Time to see hours as a staff. Now, if you haven't seen it, up at the top, after you sign in with the library card number to the library's web page, there will be a button at the top that says New Save Searches. Now, that enables you to save searches you would be able to create a username and password to access your account. Inside of your account, you would have this Save Searches box where you can save all that criteria. So if you want all the new jobs that are coming out every day, the new movers, um, a certain database that has you know, a lot of selections involved, you can have it all saved. You can come here, click on your search name, and just run those searches that way. We also have some quick introduction videos. If you do need some assistance, don't have time for a webinar, these should be able to, to help you out. So I know that is a, a lot of information. <laughs> Thanks so much for, for bearing with me there. Um, I'd love to, to open it up here and see if there's any, any questions, anything else that I can answer here for you all today. Uh, Jordan, I did have a question on, um, I know y'all used to have a background check option on A to Z. Did y'all take that off or is it still on here somewhere? Um, it should still be on your account. We're um, slowly trying to slowly phase that out of the product. Okay. Um, something that hasn't been getting a lot of traffic really. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, trying to kind of shift in a different direction. Um, okay. What we have for some of our clients currently is some COVID-19 testing information just to find certain spots or areas by state to know where, where to get a test. Makes sense. Because I know it wasn't a full background check. It was kind of like a background check light. So usually when yep. you actually do a background check, you need a real one. So gotcha. Exactly. And we're not, since it's a public reference product, you know, we couldn't give social security numbers or any type of that information out on the web. So mm -hmm. it was definitely kind of a, a light, a light version. Very good. I would assume that apartment complex owners would uh, appreciate like background checks though, if you wanted to uh, decide whether someone was um, a good candidate for rentals. We have to use a real service. Is that true? Uh, is that, uh, why did yeah, you? Yeah, I think you, so uh, it was a light version, which meant that so a lot of times to get access to that information, you have to be credentialed, which means you have to work in government. Um, so to be a credentialed user, that would give you access to see people's social security numbers. So if you are running a background search, that way you can match someone's social with their name. So that way you know for sure that this person has some sort of activity or history. Um, with our product, it was limited to where our users aren't credentialed, so you weren't able to get access to any social security numbers. So there wasn't necessarily a way to be 100% sure that any of that information was, was accurate for what you were looking at. So it couldn't be used for any you know, hiring, firing decisions or anything like that since you didn't have that extra method of verification. So you would have to already have their social security number in the application that they may be provided for their application for the apartment complex. 
Uh, potentially, yes, but with our product, you, you would not get any social security number information to verify, so um, it's not really used for those purposes. So, uh, Michael, how this is a random example. How I used that in the past was I had a very annoying neighbor, and I looked him up on it just to get the the scoop on his past experiences and, <laughs> and it was just a snoopy thing it wasn't it wasn't like I could actually like he said hire or fire anybody for that reason so it was just kind of like if you were interested but also I was not sure if that name actually did um, match up exactly with my neighbor because like he said there was no um, social security number involved or anything so right. um, it was just a, a past fancy that I enjoyed playing with I guess occasionally so um awesome. yeah it should, that it should was, still be on your account yes yes i'm a snoopy person so what can i say um <laughs> jordan that was very interesting and very very useful we really do appreciate it does anybody Good. else have any questions or can we let jordan head on out to his evening that was excellent that's exactly what we wanted to see so oh thank god you. thank you for your time thanks for having me yeah if you have ever come up with any questions let us know and Feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to be helped.